welcome back to Zoo Creates. My name is Jessica and I have Christina with me. And today we are going to make probably the funnest craft that we ever make here at the zoo. This turns into a game and your kids are gonna absolutely love it and they'll be entertained for the rest of the day, if not the rest of the week. So we are going to be making some hopping frogs today. So what you need for hopping frogs is you need two plastic cups. Now we're using punch cups today um, and they're what I found to work the best, but you um, also could just use, like if you have two yogurt cups, you could use yogurt cups, two plastic cups, of any kind. You can use paper cups, but I've found that they um, don't work the best. The plastic ones are, um, they're just a lot sturdier and they hold up the best. Um, if they're so larger cups. Like if they're larger cups, you can use the larger cups. You'll just want to make sure that the cup, um, that you have two of them that are the same size cups. Okay. So, yep, yep. Um, but the, like I said, I found that these punch cups work really, really well. And so what you're going to do is on one of the cups, you're going to punch four holes. And so we already punched our holes but we just have one on each side across from each other, like four corners, and then you're gonna take two rubber bands, and we already tied one rubber band on, but we're going to cut a rubber band, and then we'll stick it through our holes. Does it need to be a rubber band or string? You want it, it to be bouncy, okay. yeah. So it needs to be a rubber band for sure. It needs to have some elasticity to it. So that's what's going to make our frogs hop. hop. Yes. And that's what's okay. going to make it happy? Yes, that's what will make it happy. Now, of course, now that I'm tying this, I think sometimes we tend to have kids decorate first, but I'll show you how to tie it and then um, we'll decorate real quick before we tell you why we're putting rubber bands on. Because once you show kids what to do with the rubber bands, they're not going to want to decorate it. So <laughs> now that you have your rubber bands tied on, so we've got one across here. If you don't want to tie it on, you can also just take a rubber band and put it across the top, um, just like that too. Um, but I found when I've been playing this that they tend to just snap right off, so I prefer to tie them. They're more secure, but you can do it that way too. And so now that this is going to be our frog. So now that we have him on here, you can kind of see I'm, um, I'm deciding to make two of these little corners my little feet so you can see some feet so this is going to be the front of my frog and frogs have really big eyes and so I cut some eyes out of some white paper and I'm going to draw on some pupils I think I'm going to use some a black crayon and I'm just going to draw two big eyes if you have googly eyes you can use googly eyes too or markers you can if you have sticker eyes you can do that as well but you just want two really big eyes and you can just glue your paper right on to your cup and I like to do this first because then you can cover up the extra white paper underneath and I always say the more glue you use the better when it comes to glue sticks that'll really get things to stick on so we've got my two froggy eyes sticking up there and now I'm going to decorate my frog. Now, Christina, I know people think of green when they think of frogs, but can frogs be other colors too? Oh yeah, frogs do not have to be green. Uh, more often than not, they're actually not green. Uh, for example, tree frogs that we would have around here are going to be more likely to be gray than okay. green. Okay. So they can be a lot of different colors. And I realized I put my eyes a lot lower. <laughs> That's okay. okay, everything's different. That's Ooh, fine. You also have colorful glue. I do yes. not have colorful glue. That way you know where it's been put on. It's helpful. I like that. Yeah, and so I have some tissue paper that I'm gonna decorate my frog with. I think I'm gonna make a green and black frog, just like our poison dart frogs here at the zoo. So I'm just gonna take some green and black tissue paper. I even have, we like to, um, here at the zoo, anytime we make uh, crafts out of construction paper, we like to um, recycle all of those um, extra pieces that we've cut things out of. And so I have just a whole bunch of construction paper shapes over here. So I'm just gonna use those and glue those on as well. 
You can also give your kids glitter glue. That would be really fun to use or just straight up glitter would be really fun. That gets everywhere, but it's still a lot of fun and you'll have a really sparkly frog. You could also, um, frogs are amphibians, so they have smooth skin and sometimes it's kind of slimy because they like to live in the water. And so you could also give them some uh, paint that's kind of sparkly and let them paint their frogs and that, or some uh, uh, colored glue even, like that slime glue that they sell at the store, you can give them that. Or if they ended up using paper cups, could they use markers? Yes, absolutely, yeah. You can, use, you can try to use markers on these cups, but it doesn't tend to show up really well. And so you can just keep decorating all the way around your cup. So when I say amphibian, what does that mean, Christina? So that is one of the different types of animals we have in the world. We have reptiles, mammals, birds, and amphibians. Amphibians are the ones who, as you mentioned earlier, they're gonna have that kind of more slimy, smooth skin just because it's moist or it's wet. That's the reason why it's slimy and smooth. Um, but they're going to be animals that they need water to survive. We all need water to survive, but they need it to stay wet. If they dry out, that actually can be very uh, problematic and can kill them if they don't get enough water on their body. Uh, so they're gonna be the ones who like to live around water, like to live in rainforests, like to be around creeks, all these different things. So um, amphibians, when they're born, do they look like their parents? No, they do not. So when we are born, we look like kind of mini squishy versions of our parents. Uh, when frogs and salamanders, for example, are born, they are going to be different versions, uh, a different morph of their self. So frogs, they're gonna be tadpoles is what they're called when they're born. They hatch from their eggs in the water and they have a little tail and kind of just a little blob for a body and then slowly they start to grow legs and then those as their legs start to grow their tail starts to come in and they become a froglet until eventually they become that frog that can come out of the water so they have a lot of they have a lot of different morphs when they are amphibians versus humans where we just kind of keep getting bigger and don't have different looks to ourselves huh. All right so I'm almost done decorating my frog Right now is a really good time to look for frogs outside because we're it's pretty wet this time of year with all these rainstorms that we've been getting. And if you go outside right now, when I was walking by our Australia exhibit, we have that big pond in our Australia exhibit, and I heard all sorts of bullfrogs calling out in that pond. And some of my favorite frogs to listen for are called chorus frogs. And so you know that you can hear a chorus frog when um, you, uh, if you have a plastic comb at home and you run your finger over that plastic comb, that's exactly what a chorus frog sounds like. So that's really fun. We also have cricket frogs around here. And you know when you hear a cricket frog because it sounds like you're taking two marbles and you're banging them together. So that's what a cricket frog sounds like. I will they're have to really, start listening for this. They're a really fun one to listen for too. I listen for bullfrogs and then leopard frogs are the ones that I know pretty yes. well. There's also, um, in some parts of Iowa, we have what's called a green frog, and they sound like a broken banjo. So someone's plucking on a broken banjo spring. I like That's that. That's what they sound like, <laughs> yeah. All right, so there is my decorated frog. Now, he needs a mouth, so I'm gonna take a crayon now that I have tissue paper over there, and I'm just gonna draw a nice big smiley face over, I should have put some green there, a nice big smiley face over the front of him. So that way my smile shows up. Okay, so I've got a nice big smiling frog. A lot of frogs actually do look like they're smiling with the way their mouths are made. Yeah. So there is my frog. And frogs have really long tongues. What do they use those tongues for? They use those tongues to catch their food. Not all of them will, but some of them use their tongues. They'll throw it out. They'll, their tongue is really sticky. It'll grab hold on the food and pull it right back into their mouth. Awesome. All right. So here is my hoppy frog. And now... Are you ready to see what he does? Oh, I like that you made a yellow one. Okay, are you ready to see what he does? So you take your frog, now that you have him made, you grab him with two fingers on both sides. You're going to put that X right on top of the other cup. You're gonna pull down and then you let go. Ready? <laughs> so this is a really fun craft and 
a game to keep kids busy all day. And they're going to clean be, up later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're going to be flying all over the place, but it's a lot of fun. You can have races to see whose frog can jump the farthest. You know and which frog can jump the farthest? Which frog can jump the farthest? Goliath the farthest. frogs. Oh, they can actually right. jump about 25 feet in one jump. There are frog races or hops in the world where they can see how large or how long their frogs can hop. Uh, they learn very quickly that Goliath frogs are no longer allowed in that race. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, now that we our frogs have hopped away because um, they don't aim the best, nope. we're going to clean up because Christina brought a hoppy friend with us I or did. with her today. So I don't have to clean up as much because my little friend will actually be staying in her enclosure just so she can stay nice and wet because my hands aren't going to be like water, aren't going to be like a creek where I can keep her wet, so she stays in her enclosure due to that. All right. I'll go ahead and grab her though. She is a very unique frog. So as Jessica had mentioned, uh, she asked earlier if all frogs have to be green. And I said, no, they do not all have to be green. And she is a great example how they are not all green. Can you say hello to Cherry? Aww. So Cherry here is a tomato frog. I'm sure you can guess why they're called tomato frogs since she looks like a nice, plump, round, tiny uh, tomato. That's actually where she got her name. So cherry tomatoes are a type of tomato, Roma tomatoes, all those different types of things. So we think we're funny in our education department and we named her Cherry. <laughs> all right. So where do tomato frogs come from? Tomato frogs come from Madagascar. Um, so a lot of animals in Madagascar are found only in Madagascar because it's an island and it's kind of like Australia where you get a lot of very unique animals on an island. For example, a bright red frog. Uh, her red coloring is to kind of try to ward off animals, let them know that, hey, if you try to eat me, you might regret that. So she's not going to be nearly as poisonous as our poisonous dart frogs. Those guys can even possibly do damage to us. Hers, if if we ever got her poison on us, it would taste really bad. I would not ever recommend licking your hands after holding a frog or a toad, and that's the only way that we would be able to be affected by it. Uh, but when she gets really stressed out, she will start to sweat this kind of white glue-like substance on her back, and that's her poison. And so if an animal were to try to eat her, they would get that poison in their mouth and it would make them sick. So I don't believe, unless it's a small animal, I don't believe her poison is toxic enough to actually kill them, but it'll make them stay away from her. Okay, okay. So is, um, Ro or is Cherry, um, she, is she a frog that we would find like up in a tree? What, what, where would we find her out in the That is a great question. I don't know if y'all can see her feet very well, but if you try to see her little feet in the front, she is not a type of frog that can jump up and climb in trees. She has very long and skinny uh, toes, so they're not gonna be like those little squishy pads that you would find on tree frogs. So she is going to be more of a frog that stays on the ground. Um, and due to that, she is also not one of those frogs. We mentioned that frogs have those long sticky tongues that will come out. She is not going to be one of those. She's more of a ambush prey or predator, which means that she will sit and she'll wait for that cricket to come closer and then she'll jump on it with her head. So she's not, she doesn't have that long tongue. She's not gonna be able to climb trees. She's going to be more of a ground dwelling frog that jumps on her food versus using her tongue. Okay, now uh, sometimes we hear about toads. So can you kind of talk about the difference between what a frog is and a toad? So toads, the biggest difference between them is toads are going to be, a lot of people believe that toads can give them warts because toads are covered in little bumps. Uh, viruses actually give you warts, toads don't. But toads are going to be, uh, depending on where they're found, they're gonna have little bumps all over their body versus frogs are going to be that smooth back texture. They're not going to have the bumps all over their body. Okay, okay. And we mentioned that frogs like to be around water. Most of them are pretty good about being um, in water. They can swim away if they ever accidentally jump out of a tree into water or they can just swim in water in general. Roma is an example of a frog that is not very good with water. Um, she actually, she only gets a small little dish in her enclosure for uh, her water to drink and uh, soak in because tomato frogs are very well known for being very bad swimmers. <laughs> so if she gets water too deep, it can be bad for her. So we like to make sure that she stays nice and safe and we don't give her deep water and so she can just go sit and soak herself in it versus having to swim in it. 
And so frogs and toads and other amphibians, they, um, their skin, like we said, is really sensitive and yes. it needs to stay moist. Um, one of the reasons for that is because they actually breathe through their skin. Yes, and so do. it's really hard for an animal to breathe. Like our lungs are very wet. And yes. so it would be really hard if our lungs were dried out. It'd be hard for us to breathe. And so, but another thing that makes their, their skin is being very sensitive, they're really sensitive to things like pollution, which is when wa our waterways get dirty. Um, sometimes we don't realize that our waterways are dirty, but amphibians actually help us uh, monitor how clean our water is. Because if the cleaner our water is, the more frogs and toads and other amphibians we're going to have. These guys are going to be very important to scientists. So I actually have a, a environmental science background, so I always find that very fun about amphibians is they are what's known as indicator species where you mentioned that a lot of them, if they're at a lake or a pond, you can tell that the, po the pond is going to be healthy because there's a lot of frogs, there's a lot of salamanders, amphibians out there. Uh, when scientists are going out and trying to figure out which waterways are healthy and which ones maybe we should look more into that might have a pollution issue, uh, they use frogs and, and salamanders and other amphibians to be able to figure that out. And so if you go to a pond and there are no frogs, that is a really good indicator to scientists that maybe they should start doing some more tests and make sure that water is healthy. Yeah, so they're very important to us. And that is also why we typically don't touch our amphibians with our hands. So this is not weird even with us having to take precautions with our animals, uh, her staying in here, because if she, if I was holding her, I'd have to spray my hand with our special dechlorinated water, which pretty much means that it has all the bad things out of the water, and that's the only way I'd be able to hold her is if my hand had all of that, because otherwise, say I have hand sanitizer, soap, all this stuff on my hand, she breathes through her skin. If she were to breathe that in, that can possibly make her sick, and we don't want to make her sick, so we do as little handling with our amphibians as we can. All right, and so um, did you mention how much of a, how big, how good of a jumper she is? Is she a, is she a good jumper or is she not so much? She's not gonna be the best of jumpers since she's a ground frog. She's not going to be like those tree frogs that, that can take flying leaps and make it to other trees. She can hop or that's what she does the most is her little walk. Uh, she's not going to be the best of jumpers, just like she's not the best of swimmers. Most ground frogs are not going to have that agility like the frogs in the trees. What are some of the favorite things that she likes to eat? So you said that she likes to eat bugs, but what kind of food do we feed her here at the zoo? We feed her different things such as crickets, mealworms, superworms. Uh, she likes her crickets, I believe, the most. Um, and that's what she will, she'll get those every couple days and she'll go ahead and uh, jump after them when she's really hungry. Sometimes she's not as hungry, but when she is really hungry, she does not miss her food. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, thank you, Christina, for bringing Cherry in for all of us. And I hope you guys enjoy playing with your frogs today. And we look forward to seeing you back here on our next Zoo Creates. Bye. Bye.